Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another Scala video. So today we're gonna talk about a library called Accord. Um, it's a library by Wix um, and you can use Accord to do uh, validations and you can do um, you know sort of a domain uh, validations or um, even maybe some uh, API validations or you know if you have um, a type system or if you have um, sort of a, you know pojos uh, of that you can use a cord uh, and validate some rules um, you know in Java we have something uh, called like a hibernate um, uh, validations or validator and uh, you, you know sort of have some annotations and there's a specification for that annotation and then we, we validate here uh, it's kind of a similar idea but much much more cleaner in, in my opinion um, so um, let's get started so I have this um, POC um, here uh, with a cord uh, let me open my idea and we we can continue from there <clears throat> So basically, first thing you need to get a cord. Uh, so in my build.sbt, um, I had to add two dependencies. Um, like I said before, this is Wix uh, library. So I had to add a cord API and a cord core um, and using the version 0.76. Um, one thing I got about a cord right away, which is uh, it only brings one, um, Third-part dependency, which is in uh, Scala macros, right? Um, and uh, these are the other two uh, jars that we specified. And I also like not only being uh, minimalistic in sense of uh, third-part dependencies, but you know there is a difference between uh, the API and uh, the core uh, implementation. And these two things are the couple I also like that on their design. So. Um, if we take a look on a card and how we can, um, you know, work it with it, um, it's fairly, um, you know, straightforward. Um, so here I have a very um, small um, type system um, or pojos, right, that we can uh, take a look. So <clears throat> uh, in order to work, I had to import this accord uh, validate where we're going to do some validations in accord has a DSL and I'm importing uh, all the DSL. Then um, I'm also importing uh, the validator. Uh, I imported here inside of the object, the application, but it could be here on the top. This doesn't make much uh, any difference. Um, so I have a trait, which in Scala, uh, you know, in Java is like an interface. Um, and then this trait is called person. Person has name, surname uh, and age. Uh, name and surname are uh, strings and age is an int. Uh, and then I have a companion object uh, for the person and I have a person validator. And my person validator, um, it is a validator uh, with a generic type of the person trait. And then this uh, produce uh, or uh, this is the type that is produced by uh, this validator of person where <clears throat> I receive the person uh, called person uh, lowercase and then we expect that uh, the person dot name is not empty uh, the person dot surname is not empty and the person dot age is between lower bound 0 and 120 uh, so my program here um, considered this being a valid versions uh, or the, the valid range of uh, ages. So uh, this is cool because you can see this very fluent uh, interface, <clears throat> which is nice for an internal uh, DSL. Um, and uh, that's how we can validate the desired uh, properties. Um, of course, <clears throat> you know, uh, comparing with uh, uh, Java world uh, validations, like I was saying before, you know, if you have an annotation at the top 
the metadata and the data are kind of together, which is a cool thing. But here, um, you know, in Scala, we have this uh, culture of having companion objects like this one. So it's not really, I would say, not idiomatic, right? But um, it is nice because it's a it's compiled thing, right? So um, annotations sometimes, you know, you need to be in a hand time in order to validate them. And, and here all the validation that happens is in compile time. So that's definitely a cool thing. So <clears throat> that's neat. Uh, let's move on. Our example is not done yet. Um, here I have a case class, um, you know, in, in Java uh, 15 or 16. Now there are case classes in Java, it's called records. Um, um, but uh, here in Scala, they, they were around since uh, day one. Um, so so I, I created a case class called adult where I have a name, a surname, an age, and I have a, a contact information. And this extends the person, the trait person we have here on the top, right? And then I have a uh, I created a case object um, called adult, a companion uh, case object for the case class. And I'm, I'm providing an implicit adult validator, which is the validator of an adult. And then it's the same deal. I call validator adult. And then I can say, okay, so my, my adult is a valid person. And this is the first cool thing here, which is we can kind of um, hey, use part of the validation of the higher hierarchy, right? Because then we have person and we have adult, right? So we have sort of a specialization in two uh, levels. And here we basically leveraging uh, all the previous validation. So, so first of all, this needs to be a valid adult, right? Um, and also um, I'm um, adding further constraints um, so I, I'm gonna go through all the three validations that we have there, but also, you know, the age of this adult uh, should be uh, bigger than 18, um, and the the contact info should not be empty, right? And here, okay, so these are um, type systems, these are uh, object hierarchy, and we can see how cool the validations are. So let's see then an action, right? So. Um, this is another cool thing about a card, but um, so <clears throat> I created like a, a, a valid adult in a non-valid adult, a not valid adult. So this valid adult uh, is called Grace, uh, surname is Hopper, it has 85, and uh, here is the contact information. It's a very green uh, example. And then we validate uh, this valid adult and we got the result. And then uh, we have a non-valid adult, which is, you know, we don't have a name, is Hopper, is in the same place. And then we're gonna get a different result. And here I'm printing both. So let's see what happens here. Let me run this Accord application here in Scala. And then, yeah. So we can see that uh, the first uh, print regards to the successful a result right of the validate and we can see this um, adult right is success all right so we can easily do pattern matcher with that right and we can see that the other one um, um, the result right is invalid right and here uh, we not only see the adult but we see a failure and we see that the issue is um, the value, right, um, set value is the issue, right? So because, of course, we are missing a name uh, in, in name is mandatory. So that's a, a cool thing. And we also have a message at the end saying, oh, the name must not be empty, right? And this is cool because, um, you know, allow you to do all sorts of validations rather than be failing and throwing uh, exceptions. And that's a very functional way to deal with it. Then we could be doing pattern matching and so so that's a very clean way to deal with validations as well. So that's it, guys. This is a core. This is about this is Scala video. I hope you guys like it. Uh, see you next time. Take care. Cheers.